Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another movie reaction and commentary. Today, we're going to be going into Casablanca, and this one is an old school classic from what it seems like on the Patreon and just from what I'm looking at right here. And, you know, we, we're we not too shy from, uh, you know, old school classics. We've watched other classics on here as well, too. Uh, so if you want to be able to check out all that, I have to say it's films that are, you know, probably, you know, behind like 1960s 1950s then you'll find a good amount of uh you know videos and commentaries along with that but yeah i mean just from older films i have a high level of just respect for them because you can just really tell the uh the levels of filmmaking you it's a lot more bare bones um, whereas i feel like nowadays which isn't a bad thing um there's a lot of uh, a lot more depth within the filmmaking whereas uh, filmmaking back then because there was a lot more restrictions I mean you're working with film which is a finite thing it, unlike digital where you can just endlessly continue there's a lot more um, uh, magic within the recipe here there's a lot more uh, interesting nuances that are created within all aspects of filmmaking which hopefully I'll be able to you know catch and be able to present to you guys and share some and add some value to a film that I'm pretty sure is already pretty legendary so yeah again this is the first time watching this I'm excited to jump into it like always guys if you want to be able to hear and listen to all I have to say you can get your copy of the film sync it up with mine on the patreon and you can watch and hear all that I got to say about this film there's usually like an extra 10 15 sometimes 20 25 minutes extra of commentary so if that is something that you want to dive into and want to hear more about maybe you know your favorite film or just a film that you would like to learn more about definitely give that patreon a look you can also support this channel by leaving a like comment and subscribe and at the end of the day I'll, you don't have to do any of that um, I hope that you guys are able to enjoy your Friday just sit back relax get your popcorn and snacks as we hop into Casablanca Paris to Marseille Yeah, that's right. Damn. World War II. Yeah, this is 1940s. So this is this is this is fresh into it. I'm getting a little bit into like the tail end of it. Possible that uh, yes. Here we are. These papers expired three weeks ago. You have to come along. <laughs> he said. <laughs> Damn. Okay. I guess it was wrong for me to laugh. Homie just got absolutely capped. Pardon, Monsieur, pardon, Madame. Have you not heard? Uh, we hear very little, and we understand even less. Two German couriers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we heard very little, and we understand even less. That is pretty funny. The usual number of suspects. You know already who the murderer is. Good. Is he in custody? Oh, there's no hurry. Tonight he'll be at Ricks. Everybody comes to Ricks. I have already heard about it. Okay, so right now, there seems to be a hunt for... Somebody who has been, you know, murdering them. <laughs> so they're just deciding to round up everybody that's not from there. So is this going to be like more of like a mystery? It's going to be like a crime? It's going to be a, a romance, a drama? Could you make it just a little more, please? Sorry, madame, but diamonds are a drug on the market. Everybody sells diamonds. There are diamonds everywhere. 2,400. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> He was, he was, he told it to her straight. Jesus. Cheerio. Cheerio. Yes, sir, professor. The way this is being set up, it, it reminds me of like a mystery crime drama. <laughs> <laughs> you are a very cynical person, Rick. If, if, if you forgive me for saying so. I forgive you. Thank you. Will you have a drink with me, please? No. Oh, I forgot. Again, I got to say, you know, the smart this within the cinematography is primarily because of just a restriction but i love how subtle the camera is able to move from different frames you know they have longer takes obviously because of working with film but to navigate certain frames and compositions it's nice to see the subtlety within the motioning of the camera oh i've heard that rumor too poor devils that's your right of Gotti. I am a little more impressed with you. I like that character. I'm not sure who's our main character here, but I'm thinking it's him. I like that he's very cautious with people. Keeps to himself. It's quite opposite to everybody that's in this place. Who were you last night? Not so long ago, I don't remember. 
Will I see you tonight? I never make plans that far ahead. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this dude is cold, bruh. My high regard for you. We're staging it here. It will amuse your customers. <laughs> Our entertainment's enough. Rick, we'd have an important guest here tonight. Major Strut. Wow. That's so cool. Love that. Love that the silhouette is right there. Again, it's great compositioning, great framing. You can tell a story in so many ways. Again, it's just smart filmmaking. I just paid out 20. I'd like to get it back. Make it 10. I'm only a poor corrupt of it. Done. No matter how clever he is, he still needs an exit visa. I gotta say, I appreciate the self-awareness of these characters. These characters just feel... Like they exist within this place. They feel like they're smart. <laughs> Good. Like they're, they're, these characters feel like how their characters would act, but they also feel human. It's the best way I can describe it. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Captain. Won't you join us? Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here, Major. Another thing I want to mention, too, is nice that we're in this confined area. I'm not sure if the whole film is going to be within this environment, but it's nice because I'm already getting a sense of recognition just from this area just how long we've been in it and how much the camera's been moving throughout it as well as all the characters too yo i mean sometimes you forget how serious the situation is do something you must help me and i believe we saw his character and Oh, man, what was it? Was it the Frankenstein film with uh, that one actor? I'm forgetting his name, but he was like Willy Wonka. I don't know. I feel like he played like the Smeagol or <laughs> whatever that thing was. A bottle of your best champagne and put it on my bill. Very well, sir. Captain, please. Oh, please, monsieur. It is a little game we play. They put it on the bill. I tear up the bill. It is very... I don't know why, but this reminds me of um, the first scene in Inglorious Bastards. Just with how the, the the underlying feeling, it's all it's all the things that are happening beneath the surface. That's why it reminds me of that. Again, it's very quick, but I think even the editing is really well done in this. You know, it, it's making me feel like there's other people that we've previously met that know a lot more than what we know. Just from how these characters are giving looks to one another. And about Victor Laszlo everywhere. Won't you join us for a drink? Oh, no, Rick. No. Thanks, I will. Well, the precedent has been... <laughs> this dude, man, he's so freaking hilarious, man. Oh, my God. He's just commentating everything. He's having a ball. Boss, aren't you going to bed? Not right now. Ain't you planning on going to bed in the near future? No. You <laughs> ever going to bed? No. <laughs> wow. These two are great. Honestly, I really love all the characters here. It's like it's like I've been thrown into a board game and all the pieces are actually really dope. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it every time. They know exactly when to push the camera in. It's great. Those beats you know, it, it does a lot when building up, you know, emotion like that. You know, that's why I said earlier, the filmmaking, it, it may seem a little bit more bare bones, but I feel like those decisions just hit a little bit more. Uh-huh. That's easy. That was. He's dead. Damn. R.I.P. But you're with me now. <laughs> and I hope he doesn't die. That would be a little awkward. Where were you, say, ten years ago? Ten years ago? Yes, I was having a brace put on my teeth. How old are y'all, man? <laughs> How old are y'all, bruh? Station. <laughs> All right. At a quarter to five. Say, why don't we get married, Marge? <laughs> Oh, man, I got a feeling that she never showed up. I have a feeling that she never showed up at that train station. Hence why he's all bitter and sad and <laughs> bummed out. He's down bad. Hey, 
Hey, what's wrong, kid? You gotta stop calling her kid. <laughs> you gotta stop calling her that. <laughs> you, you, you gotta stop calling her that, bro. <laughs> That's a cool shot. That is a cool shot with the ink running down from the rain. Yikes, that sucks. Seem too young for you anyway, so. <laughs> a wow finish. A guy standing on a station platform in the rain with a comical look on his face because his insides have been kicked out. Damn. Golly, bro. <laughs> He's very in tune with his emotions, I'll tell you that. The way he was able to say that was very. <laughs> Tragically beautiful. <laughs> In between, uh, aren't you the kind that tells? I mean, I get, I get it. <laughs> I get it. That was a pretty effed up thing to to do to somebody that you loved. <laughs> so I get it. I get it. Yes, even in Berlin, if you will furnish me with their names and their exact whereabouts. Nope. Absolutely not. F of visa, I ain't snitching. <laughs> if I didn't give them to you in a concentration camp, where you had more persuasive methods at your disposal, I certainly won't give them to you now. Woo! Oh, wow. That... Yo, these lines in this film are hitting, man. That is a hard line. The news about Ugarty upsets me very much. You're a fat hypocrite. You don't feel any sorrier for Ugarty than I do. Of course not. What upsets me is the fact that Ugarty is dead. Yeah, I think it's it's I think it's like how everyone is sort of real with each other, even though when they're not real, they're like obviously ha having like a, a few layers in front of them, so people don't know their true intentions. I love how the bull crap is just cut from this film. Everything is just like we know what's up. It's not holding our hand. I dig that. Last night I saw what has happened to you. The Rick I knew in Paris, I could tell him he'd understand. Bro. You left him. You left him. What? Okay. She's she's frustrating. <laughs> no, you see, Victor Laszlo is my husband. And was, even when I knew you in Paris. Damn. Yo, see, that's what I'm saying. How do you how do you expect him to receive that information? When you are lying to him, that is crazy. You, you, you probably are a victim, but you're not a victim in that regard. <laughs> Do you know where they are? Not for sure, monsieur. But I'll venture to guess that Ugarty left those letters with Monsieur Rick. Mm, well, there you go. You got a reason to stay. Got to find out what those letters are. I have no conviction, if that's what you mean. I blow with the wind, and the prevailing wind happens to be from Vichy. And if it should change... Hit. I wonder if Quentin Tarantino made his uh, character of Christoph Waltz and Inglorious Bastards off of this. Like, like if there was some inspiration, because I'm seeing not only the mannerisms, but even his ideology. The way he just says that he's he has no conviction, he has no sides, he's just blowing with the wind. The similarities is there. Well, things are very bad there, monsieur. The devil has the people by the throat. So, Jan and I, we... We did not... This is interesting. I wonder if the thing that the other guy mentioned about Rick and his his soft-heartedness, you know, even though he has his hard exterior, there's like a soft heart within him. And I wonder if this is going to pull it a little bit. Bad thing locked in her heart. That would be all right, wouldn't it? Do you want my advice? Oh, yes, please. Go back to Bulgaria. Oh, but if you knew what Damn. Oh my goodness, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's like the moment he gets hurt, he just puts on that that hard shell of an exterior. Tried 22 tonight. I said 22. Marquons les jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Les jeux sont faits. La partie continue. Marquons les jeux. Mm, yep, see? He he tries to help out wherever he can. He really tries to do that. Well, a couple of thousand less than I thought there would be. I mean, as cool as that was, super shady. Like, that was just like, I mean, like, come on. <laughs> but it's nice to see him help out like that. I'm sure the other guy, the, um, you know, the, the 
Gustavo is keen on on him. Well, I forgive you this time, but I'll be in tomorrow night with a breathtaking blonde, and it'll make me very happy if she loses. <laughs> yeah, I love these characters, man. It's so good. I love the language. I love just the lingo and the dialogue that's happening between them. Again, it, it seems it feels smart. It seems progressive, like just the way things are building with the story. And it doesn't make me feel like, you know, they're trying to hold my hand. It's my privilege to be one of the leaders of a great movement. You know what I've been doing. You know what it means to... It's a complex story with entertaining aspects and smart filmmaking. Wait. Woo! Oh, they're about to have a showdown. Oh, snap. <laughs> This is so petty, but I love it. <laughs> I mean, it speaks volumes. Hence why we're turning the volume up. <laughs> Sing it louder. There's this warning tonight. I'm frightened. To tell you the truth, I'm frightened too. So shall I remain here in our hotel room hiding? Or shall I carry on the best I can? Yo, Victor's a G, man. I mean, obviously, you know, this dude, seen, been through a lot. Victor is a straight up G, man. <laughs> I in Casablanca. What of it? I'm gonna die in Casablanca. It's a good spot for it. Girl, you need to apologize. <laughs> like, you need to just apologize for... Oh, my God. She has a gun to him. She has a gun to him. Are you kidding me, girl? You are crazy. <laughs> the day you left Paris, if you knew what I went through, if you knew... I loved you. Well, then say it. Say it. <laughs> Next time, just start off with that. Like, what the heck? I mean, I, I obviously, I get it, right? I'm just poking fun here. But, girl, you need to do a better job at getting to the point. <laughs> Why weren't you honest with me? Why did you keep your marriage a secret? Well, it wasn't my secret, Richard. Victor wanted it that way. Not even uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out as well. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I just sometimes wonder if it's worth all this. I mean, what you're fighting for. You might as well question why we breathe. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, that's a crazy question to ask somebody who's been in a concentration camp. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Any chance you were to help him to escape? What makes you think I'd stick my neck out for Laszlo? Because, one, you bet 10,000 francs he'd escape. Two, you got the letters of transit. Now, don't bother to deny... <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I forgot he did bet... <laughs> he did bet money on his escape at the beginning of this film. That's funny. I'm taking no chances, Louis. Not even with you. <laughs> I love how you can just tell where someone is, you know, just by that. They're in the blue parrot because it's a parrot. I don't know. It's cool. It's a cool way of showing something again without telling. Oh, you're surprised about my friend Ricky. The explanation is quite simple. Love, it seems, has triumphed over virtue. Thank you. Woo! Oh! He put the blicky out! <laughs> Ricky with the blicky! Oh, snap! Sit down over there. Put that gun down. Yo, the way people be sticking people up, they just be like... <laughs> Ricky with the blicky, bruh. Hills, I'm no good at being noble. It doesn't take much to see that the problems of three little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Something's <laughs> funny. They got some great lines in this, man. Like, I don't know what it is about older films, but the the lines, the delivery of it, it just hits different. Get me the radio tower. Put it down. Woo! Oh, man! Yo, Rick! What the blick? Bruh, oh, dog. Round up the usual suspects. Good play. I'm happy y'all worked it out, man. And it relates to his character because he doesn't play for both sides. It's easier to take that action than suffer the consequences. So. You still owe me 10,000 francs. <laughs> 10,000. Mm -hmm. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. That's cool. That's cool. That was literally the best way this could have ended. I'm really satisfied. Damn, that was really good. <laughs> All right, everybody, and that is the end. 
to Casablanca. All right, everybody, we just got done Casablanca, and that was a great film. I love that. I, I love that I was able to piece together a lot of things. It was my brain loved it loves films like this um, especially with older films because it just seems that you know they they take a lot more time for the digestion process to happen like the frames hold a lot longer uh, the the writing is a lot more uh, refined and wittier uh, it, it just it's all the things that I already love and it just happens to be something that they kind of had to do simply because you know film was a finite tool and you know, whereas now you know, there's so many options. You don't, you know, the 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 high goal of film filmmaking doesn't have to be the forefront of your films anymore. And to some people that might sound crazy, but that's just the truth. You don't have to have high level filmmaking nowadays uh, to, you know get your film to be noticed or anything like that that's just the way things are now but i really appreciate when filmmaking is at the forefront of a film i, I enjoy when uh there's smart filmmaking when there's clear intention that you can tell that the script is you know at least several steps ahead of you and it doesn't completely throw you into a loop i really enjoy that i think that's like a great uh like back and forth experience from the audience to the actual uh, story that's being told here. But yeah, I loved all the characters. Absolutely loved all the characters. I loved how uh, each one was able to ping off of one another and how you were able to pick up different clues and different informations, not just from the dialogue, but just how people reacted to certain things. And then that beautiful segment with um, you know, the German anthem. Also, what happened to the homie with the piano? Huh? What happened to him? I hope he's good. What the heck? But uh, I, I love that scene, you know, where the German, uh, they took over the piano and they're playing their anthem. And, you know, uh, everyone else, like just France just kind of comes alive. And the the French anthem comes on, and or at least I think so, or at least it's one of the anthems. And just having that, like, <laughs> damn near rap battle kind of just, you know, uh, pursuing and then the overwhelming response. There's just so much to digest here, not just from the story itself, but just from the context that is outside of the story as well, too, you know? Like World War II and then just the sense of, uh, of oppression and the invasion as well, too and uh, just just all of that it was just so well done nothing felt super in your face and overbearing it didn't hold my hand as well too this was a really damn good film like this was really damn good so i could tell i could see now why you know this film is you know praised to such high regards so i would love to hear your thoughts as well what did you guys think of the music the filmmaking the cinematography the lighting the actors what do you guys think of it all i would love to hear down below in the comment section like always guys stay healthy and stay hydrated because we are just getting started purple jacket pocket full of weed everything that i should ever need grab some matches because they give them free just like my time Pull back in the back seat